Thank you, Madam Speaker. A few questions to the proponent of the bill for you. Representative Porter, please prepare yourself. Representative Wood, please proceed, Madam. In Washington, there was a piece of legislation put forward called the Cradle Act, which would be a paid parental leave plan that is budget neutral and flexible for parents who choose to opt in. And the legislation would allow parents to receive one, two, or three months of paid leave by giving them the option to pro postpone activating their Social Security benefits. The plan provides every new mom and dad the flexibility to stay home with their newborns during the first critical months after birth without creating another mandated government bureaucracy. And I wonder if the Labor Committee considered this legislation in their discussions on paid family leave. Through you. Representative Porter. Through, through you, Madam Speaker, there were several things considered. I can't rem remember if that circumstance in particular was considered, but we did look at Washington, California, Rhode Island, New Jersey, New York, uh, several states that have done this and came up with this being what we felt or feel is the best option for Connecticut through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. Thank you for that answer. If this plan does, this legislation does pass, and I know on both the House and the Senate and the uh, executive level there is support for this legislation in Washington, what would happen to our paid family leave program that would be put in place by that point? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, just for clarification, are you saying Washington, D.C., on the federal level, has a program, and if that program is implemented, how will it impact the state program? Through you, Madam Speaker. Correct. So, correct. Representative Wood. Correct. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Uh, through you, Madam Speaker, I'm not sure, but knowing what I know about federal, the limitation that I have on knowing about the federal law, I don't believe that it supersedes the state law but I'm not sure, so I would have to get clarification on that for the good gentle lady. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. Because, first of all, I, I, I will say I'm, I support paid family leave. It's just how we deliver it and what it looks like. Um, I, I think it's, it's humane, it makes sense, it's good for citizens, it's good for business, but again, it's, it's the details. It's how, how, what does this look like? Um, if we start up the Connecticut plan, and people are paying into it, and a federal plan is enacted, what happens to the Connecticut plan and all the people that have made their contributions to that plan? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, it would be the same response that I gave earlier. I'm not quite sure how that would impact the state program. If it would impact it at all, I'm not sure. Through you, Madam Speaker. Okay. Representative Wood. Thank you. I, I think we should be as we pass legislation, we need to understand holistically what we're doing and, and make sure whatever plan we do is sustainable. And I do have concerns about this sustainability of this plan. A few other questions. Um, our state is the only state in the country not to regain the jobs lost in the 2008 recession and the only state, Massachusetts, we're I think at 80% job retrieval and we've lost, we've lost jobs this fiscal year, we're still down net jobs. And Massachusetts in that same time period has regained 300% of jobs. So it, it's a concern and I know many businesses are deeply concerned about this legislation. So did the economic states did the state's economic situation factor into your designing this legislation? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, yes. Through you. Representative Wood. But given, well, next question is, what did you hear from our business community on this legislation? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, uh, the responses to this bill varied throughout the state. Uh, strong support in my district and other districts throughout the state, but there was also non-support, people in opposition to this because of what they believe the impact will be on business. But I would like to also state that in states where this has been done, there has not been a negative impact, actually a more neutral impact on the concerns that have been expressed to, um, from those in opposition. Through you, Madam Speaker. 
Representative Wood. Thank you for that answer. And to that point, there was uh, some good points made by Representative Blumenthal. I would like on a side note to see that documentation because I would like to be able to read through that. But again, that's a side note. Uh, on the business community, I know so many small businesses, medium-sized businesses, businesses of 25 people, businesses, small manufacturing firms, businesses of 500 people and up. I heard from many of them and they were all very concerned about this legislation. Largely, they felt it was unwieldy. It was too big to start. It far exceeds the other states in New England. And I just wondered why why the benefits in Connecticut from the get-go are broader than any other state in New England. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, I don't see it as being much broader and I will I can't recollect the state off the top of my head. I'm not sure if it's Massachusetts or New York, but there are ranges from our proposed 95%, 90% wage replacement, 80% wage replacement, down to, I believe, 60% wage replacement. So there is a grand scale variation uh, going on with the, the benefits. And actually, California, 60 to 70%. New Jersey is at 66.66%, uh, DC 90% weekly wage, and um, Washington workers are paid 50% or less of uh, a, the average weekly wage, receive 90% of their weekly wage with a $1,000 a week cap. Uh, going back to DC at 90% weekly wage, theirs is also a $1,000 a week cap. And then right next door, we have Massachusetts. They're receiving 90% of their weekly wage at a $850 a week cap. So we're not that far off with the 95 sliding 60% at a cap of $900 through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. Thank you for those answers. It involves more than simply wage replacement. It's the ability to opt in or opt out and the wage replacement. Certainly 50% is a very different wage replacement than 95% economically sustainable almost every way. Um, the other factors that are involved as well is the amount of time you have to be employed the definition of family. So on every scale, on every issue, Connecticut far exceeds other states. So that is a, that is a huge concern to many of us. Um, many companies offer PTO, certainly as we talk about millennials in here. Um, to attract millennials, they are now getting PTO. And a PTO is flexible, it's sustainable. And I wondered if you reached out to these companies that are doing the PTO plans for their employees and how they manage their benefits. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker. I'm not sure of what the question is. Did we reach out to companies that offer paid time off in relation to how we set the, the, the fund, the program up? Is that the question? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. More holistically, it seems this plan from a very, very progressive policy point of view took root without, with little regard for private sector, for people in this state, for sustainability, certainly any Republican support. I don't think there was any effort to reach out across the aisle on getting consensus. I think there are many of us that could have met in the middle on a moderate version of this. This version is extreme. It's unsustainable, and it causes us great concern. So my point, my question, back to the question is, did you reach out to companies to find out those companies who offer PTO, how they manage their PTO? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Uh, we did meet with other companies, uh, Electric Boat being one. We did discuss PTO and uh, the effect of that and how it should be taken in effect that this passes. But I think that we did take into consideration many things when we put this bill together and that um, the progression of this bill is in a response to the desperation in this state around uh, how people are actually weathering economically. We are losing 
our middle class, our middle wages. We have more low wage jobs than any jobs. Since the recession, over 90% of our jobs have been replaced with, with low wage jobs. And I stated earlier that, you know, this is an effort to make sure that those that cannot afford to take this time off actually have the benefit, you know, and the question of whether they will use it or not, I believe that they will, and if they don't, it is definitely a security or a safety blanket, I would like to call it, in the instance that they have that security if needed. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. Thank you. Uh, I don't know that many economists would, quite frankly, support that point of view, but that's, we're all entitled to our point of view on this. Um, and were there any other companies you reached out to on how they manage their PTO? It just seems like this came from a very narrow focus, this whole policy development, and it didn't include broad interviewing of companies that have successful policies in place that are sustainable companies through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Uh, through you, Madam Speaker, there were other companies, but there are more companies that don't offer the PTO. The, the, the majority weighs on the other side. And these low wage workers do not have those benefits. They don't have personal time, vacation time. They work years before they even get one week vacation. So that, that was also taken into consideration through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. Thank you for that answer. And 100%, that's not right either. I mean, to, for employees to have to work years before they get paid time off is simply not right. My point, and where I stand on this, is I think we've gone overboard with this piece of legislation. And I know how many people on both sides of the aisle feel about this. I know how companies feel. Again, I've had multiple companies contact me about this, multiple constituents. It is simply an overreach in a state that has not regained the jobs lost. And to, your, to the good Representative Porter's point about the middle class's jobs are losing, yes, because job creators are not coming to Connecticut because of the heavy hand of government and the mandates. And we must stop that. It's simply not working. Um, was your priority to incentivize, in developing this legislation, was your priority to incentivize a private sector solution to this, or did you always just consider the Department of Labor in this? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, there was serious consideration made, and I do believe it impacted the outcome of the bill in us choosing not the Department of Labor, but a quasi-public. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. So uh, I have a question a little further down, but I'll inject that now. Um, so the Department of Labor is not going to be administering this program. Is that correct? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, that is correct. Representative Wood. So who will be administering this program? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, the authority and the board that they appoint. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. And the authority is in Senate Amendment A, correct? Through you, Re Madam Speaker. Re Representative Porter. Through you, correct. Representative Wood. So that's section, uh, okay. <laughs> I need more hands. <laughs> Join the club. So, no, thank you. <laughs> in line 73 it, of the Senate amendment, it um, talks about this authority. Was this authority in the original le legislation? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, it was not in the bill that came out of the committee. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. Thank you. So this, I know the governor had spoken about this, and he had wanted the, a private sector solution to administering the program. So does this solve the governor's concern about that? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, it does. Representative Wood. And thank you for that answer. And how many appointments will the governor have on this authority? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, I do believe it's seven. I will double check to confirm that for the good lady, though. Through you. Representative Wood. Thank you. Well, there, I will be honest, there's comfort in that. I, I, mm -hmm. I still thought it was being delivered by the Department of Labor. 
Um, and I just don't think we need to, well, um, okay. So the rising costs, our state, costs are rising exponentially in our state. And did the discussion of the financial situation in our state factor into the development of this policy? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker. I'm sorry, I had trouble hearing the good lady. Could she please repeat the question? Representative Wood. It was a, another angle of our financial situation in our state is not a good one. Um, again, we're, we still have not regained all the jobs lost. Job creators are not coming to Connecticut. We're the bottom of almost every single economic indicator for job creators and people wanting to come to this, to this state to start businesses and stay here. And I wondered if that factored into the discussion at all on the committee level or even the policy development level within a small group. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, that did uh, come into play, but what also came into play as far as consideration goes is the fact that we are lacking in economic growth because we have stagnant wage growth. And I think that has to be considered when we factor in why Connecticut is doing so poorly economically. Through you, Madam Speaker. So, Representative Wood. Th thank you. I just want to be clear. You said to the good representative Porter, you said stagnant wage growth factored into development of this policy. Is that correct through you? Representative Porter? Through you, Madam Speaker. I said this stagnant wave growth was considered in the conversations around businesses, hearing that businesses do not want to come to Connecticut because we actually do have businesses coming to Connecticut. Through you, Madam Rep Speaker. Representative Wood. We actually have businesses coming to Connecticut, a net job growth through you, Madam Speaker. Is, did I hear you right? Representative Porter? Yes, through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. All right. Well, I disagree with that. But again, we are each entitled to uh, our interpretation of, of the facts, I suppose. Um, there is no state that currently offers paid family leave. There's no state that currently offers family, the paid family leave that offers a 100% wage replacement. Why did Connecticut offer full wage replacement? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, we are actually offering in this legislation 95% uh, wage replacement up to 40 times the minimum wage. Anything above that would be 60% wage replacement up to 40 times the minimum wage with a cap of 60 times the minimum wage through you. Representative Wood. Right. Thank you very much for that clarification. Um, sole proprietors may opt in, as I understand it, through this legislation, through you. Is that correct? Through you. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, yes. Representative Wood. And why was opting out not considered? I know New York State offers opt out. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, that is correct. New York is the only state that offers an opt out. It was considered, but we looked at the issues of solvency and the fact that every employee would be paying into this. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. And I know the questions have been asked on why the state employees were exempted from this, so I won't. I won't ask those again, but I, that, when people in the district hear that, it's, it's of great concern and great duplicity. It, it just doesn't seem equitable. Um, was consideration given to exempting businesses with less than 30 employees in this legislation through you? Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, yes. Representative Wood. And why was it decided that you, it was mandatory that everyone in the state participate in this through you? Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, because every employee would be required to pay into the benefit. Every employee should have the benefit. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wood. So the only state that has a mandatory opt-in, every other state that has this has the opt-out. In a sense, you're taking away the individual choice. Is that correct? Through you. Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, I do apologize. Could you please repeat the question? Representative Wood. We're the only state in the country, if I'm hearing you correctly, we're the only state in the country that does not have the opportunity to opt 
out of this legislation if we have no intention of ever taking this benefit through you, Madam Speaker. Is that correct, through you? Representative Porter. Through you, Madam Speaker, New York has an opt-out, through you. Representative Wood. And other states, through you? Representative Porter. Not to my knowledge, through you. Representative Wood. Well, I don't, I, I, gives me great concern on that one as well. I, I just think it's individual liberty on, on some of these issues. And it's, we've started off this policy with such a large footprint. Social, I'm gonna digress for a minute. Social Security, when it started in the 1930s, was opt-in. And we know what's happened with that. All of a sudden, you start taking more and more and more and not delivering it. It's not sustainable. And it's just, it's just a big concern in a state that is absolutely struggling financially. And I don't think there's anybody in this chamber and anybody in this state that does not realize what a difficult financial situation our state is in. And this does not help. We need to help people, and I understand the importance of this. I support the importance of this, but not the way this legislation is written. And I think it's shameful that we didn't have more participation across the board and across the state, across party lines and across the state. We could have done this. All right, that, I think I've asked all the questions I have for right now. I do, as I've said, I do favor paid FMLA. I've had three children. I've given birth to three children. I know what it's like in those days when, you, when you're trying to figure out which end is up and what if it's day or night. And, um, and aging, uh, dealt with aging parents who ended up passing away and in-laws and family members who, in fact, I remember one session, I was, I think it was my freshman term here, my mother was ill and my uncle was ill in Florida. One was in Ohio, one was in Florida. Every other weekend I was on, I was heading down there because there wasn't, I was it. I was the only family member who could travel. And it was tough, it was difficult. Um, so I'm certainly deeply, deeply sensitive to it, particularly for the lower wage earners. And I wish some of the companies would step up and do the right thing without us having to frickin' mandate some of these things. Anyway, I, I just don't believe our economy can grow without, with this heavy hand of government, and this is a heavy hand of government. We've passed some big pieces of legislation this year, all which had strong pieces of merit, um, but we need the competition, the private sector does it better. We simply do it better. We as a collective whole, not, not, that's not a partisan statement. And I've already expressed this too. We had the opportunity to do this in a bipartisan way and reach across the aisle and develop this with business partners. We could have come up with a much more moderate version of this that would be equally sustainable and certainly support the lower wage workers. Um, so my concern of this legislation is not the intent of the legislation, but the overreach and Many of us could have gotten on board with a more moderated version of this, and I, I know there are a couple amendments coming up, and I do hope the chamber will consider them. Thank you, uh, Representative Porter. I have great respect for the work you do and your passion around this, and thank you for spending the time. I know it's hard to be on your feet for... <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, anyway, uh, and thank you, Madam Speaker.